Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last video we talked about modular arithmetic and congruences and in this video we're going to talk about the concept of multiplicative inverses and zero divisors. Now a major difference in modular arithmetic opposed to ordinary arithmetic is the existence of multiplicative inverses. In ordinary arithmetic the units 1 and negative 1 are each their own inverse and no other integers have integral multiplicative inverses. And this is not the case for modular arithmetic. Now, just uh, in case you don't know what this means, if I talk about an additive inverse, every integer has an additive inverse. If I have an integer n, if I add that to negative n, I get 0. So negative n is called the additive inverse of n, and 0 is called the additive identity of n. Now for multiplication, the identity, the multiplicative identity is 1. So we say that n has an inverse, we write n times n inverse equals 1. Now 1 is my multiplicative identity, so this is multiplicative inverses. 1 is my multiplicative identity, so we say that a number has an inverse if I can multiply that number by its inverse and get 1. Now, if I talk about the rationals, every rational number is a unit, or in other words, has a multiplicative inverse, right? Because I can take, for example, 2 and multiply that by this, in rationals, 2 to the negative 1 literally means 1 over 2. So 2 times 1 over 2 equals 1. So all these rationals have inverses. But in modular arithmetic, n to the negative 1 does not mean 1 over n. In a sense it does, but division in modular arithmetic is defined differently. We define it as finding the inverse. So this n to the negative 1 really means the value which I can multiply to n to get 1. It's not going to be a fraction because we're only dealing with integers. So let's take a look at, at what this kind of looks like. Yep, let's, let's look at an example. So if I want to look modulo 7, oh, let's look at modulo 7. I'm going to look at all of the elements modulo 7 and see which ones have inverses. Now if I look at 2 times 4, 2 times 4 equals 8, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. So 2 and 4 are inverses. Good. 3 times 5 equals 15, which is congruent to 1 mod 7 as well. <laughs> I don't know why I parenthesized that, but 15 congruent to 1 mod 7. 1 in the regular integers and in modular arithmetic is always its own inverse. 1 times 1 is always 1, is always congruent to 1, etc. And we have one more. 6 squared equals 36, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. So the way that we would write this is that 2 inverse equals 4, 4 inverse equals 2, 3 inverse equals 5, 5 inverse equals 3, 6 inverse equals 6. And we'll always have the case that 1 inverse equals 1. That's always uh, an identity that we'll have. Now this actually worked out really nice. Everything in our residue class, modulo 7, has an inverse. We're going to find out later that for a prime modulus, everything in the residue class other than 0 will have an inverse. And 0 will never have an inverse, right? 0 having an inverse doesn't really make sense. You can't multiply something by 0 and get 1. And that carries over in modular arithmetic as well. Let's look at modulo 12. Modulo 12 is a little bit different. Where 7 was prime, so everything had an inverse, modulo 12, that's not going to be the case. right? Now if I look at 11 times 11, this is going to be congruent to 5 times 5. I'll let you check these on your own. Uh, 7 times 7, right? This is 121, which is 1. When I divide by 12, my remainder is 1. 25, which is 24 plus 1. 49, which is 48 plus 1. So these all give 1 after division. So these are all congruent to 1 mod 12. So 11 inverse equals 11, 5 inverse equals 5, and 7 inverse equals 7. Of course, 1 has its inverse, um, but the rest, 
uh, we have two, three, four, uh, six, eight, nine, ten. These have no inverses. Modulo 12. No inverses at all. And in fact, we have an interesting property with some of these numbers, with all of these numbers actually. Let's look at 2 times 6. 2 times 6 equals 12, which is congruent to 0 mod 12. Now in ordinary arithmetic, this can't happen, can it? We can't take two non-zero integers, multiply these two numbers together where neither of them are zero, and get a product that is zero. This only happens in modular arithmetic, and we have a special name for it. It's called zero divisors. We say that two numbers are zero divisors, modulo n, if neither number is congruent to zero mod n, but their product is congruent to zero mod n. So let's take a look at another example of this. Find all inverses and zero divisors modulo uh, six. So first let's look at the inverses. I always have that one inverse equals one. No problem. Now let's take a look at what else we have. If I look at five, well five squared equals 25. And 6 times 4 is 24, so 25 is congruent to 1 mod 6. So I have that 5 is its own inverse. But turns out none of the others have inverses. Now you can't have something have an inverse and be a zero divisor at the same time, uh, but we'll see that in a second. 2 times 3 is equal to 6, which of course is congruent to 0 mod 6. And 3 times 4 equals 12, which is congruent to 0 mod 6. Oh, this was messy over here, mod 6, not mod parenthesis. So 2, 3, and 4 are 0 divisors. I'm trying really hard not to jump ahead of myself because uh, there's an easy way to know which numbers have inverses for a particular modulus and which numbers have zero divisors. But I'm going to go ahead and wait and put that in the next video. So go ahead and come to the next video. I'm going to show you an easy way to know which numbers have inverses and we're going to look at some uh, a matrix method that we can use in order to find an inverse once we get to those really big numbers in the several hundreds. Right? It's a little bit more tricky. So we'll see you there.